Welcome, fine viewers, to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. In March 2005, a unique scientific conference entitled Quantum Physics Meets Kabbalah took place in San Francisco, California, USA, with Kabbalist Rav Michael Lightman and American quantum physicists William Tiller, Jeffrey Satinover, and Fred Allen Wolf in attendance. Rob Lightman is the founder and director of the B'nai Baruch World Center for Kabbalah Studies and founder and president of the ARI, Ashlag Research Institute. The three scientists appeared in the critically acclaimed American documentary, What the Bleep Do We Know? The conference was fascinating and featured closed discussions and panel presentations before students and teachers from the University of California, Berkeley, USA, and Stanford University, USA. Rob Lightman gave a concentrated overview of Kabbalah, an ancient spiritual wisdom, explaining the structure of reality and how the main substance of creation, the desire to receive pleasure, evolves. A documentary was produced about the event by the B'nai Baruch Kabbalah Education and Research Institute entitled, Ups and Downs in San Francisco. Last week, we showed excerpts of this work which featured the interactions between the three scientists and Rav Lightman as he explained to them the basics of Kabbalah. This week, we bring you further portions of the documentary which fascinatingly depicts the intersection of the perspectives of those trained in quantum physics with that of spirituality as represented by the wisdom of Kabbalah. Still, despite it all, the scientists stayed on. They listened. They took notes. As scientists, they know that ultimately this is the only way to discover the truth. Once more at the lecture. Love, will, light, wisdom flows through one into the world and that benefits the Creator. I'm afraid to tell you it is not so. Because in order for us to be a hose for the light, we have to have the same properties as the light because it's all, it all connects through a process of equivalence of form. Now, if you can take your desire to, first of all, discern what exactly it is, it's not some intentions or properties, it's a desire, you can begin to relate to the pleasure that comes to you, as it says here, by even 1%. If you begin to do that, you'll feel the Creator. Thus, lecture followed lecture. We've captured 10 hours of lectures on video videos of Rob explaining all of the wisdom of Kabbalah. We saw the city only through the car window on our way back and forth from the hotel. They tell us it's beautiful. Let's return to the lecture. We have letters say like Aleph, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and then Aleph again, etc. There are no words there. There are dots there, and we might have 20 such letters, or six such letters, or three or four. All in all, they give us, how should I put it, a formula in which we have to do things inside with our desire. And that's how one is taught how he should perform actions of receiving in order to give to the Creator. Now that's what we call God. It's an unchanging law operating on every item in creation. Let's say that's creation. So that's the creature. And that law operates on the creature in order to bring it to equivalence of form with the Creator. So that they equalize so that the creature and creator will merge together to the point of no difference. So what's so special? It could do it in the beginning. The thing is, though, that the creature has to develop within itself a desire to be like the creator. Now there is a sensation that every word is being heard, but how hard it was to get there. We recall. In our world, there is nothing that doesn't come down from the world at Silut. The forces, the substance, actions, time, space, motion, everything possible. 
What is here in this world is called a branch, which is an offshoot of what exists in the upper world. So how do I tell someone something about the upper world? I take the names from this world of people, things, places, society. I refer to what happens here in the world of Siluts. But I take the names from here and there. If one knows only about this world, then the, the story takes place in this world, and then he imagines the creator as a big person. But one who understands that it talks about something beyond this world seeks where it is up there. We will pause briefly for some messages. This is Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality. We now continue with excerpts from the documentary about the intersection of science and the spiritual tradition of Kabbalah entitled, Ups and Downs in San Francisco. In Kabbalah, you never know when that moment will come, when all the pieces fall together. A major inversion takes place and it all begins to make sense. back at the lecture. But still, how do I receive pleasure and constantly enjoy? Endlessly. So there has to be someone up there that I enjoy because he enjoys. It's as if the pleasure goes through me to him. So then I, I'm not put out because my pleasure is always here like a mother who enjoys with her baby. She wants always to, to give it. Do you recognize yourself as part of the whole? Of course. Great, that's it. That's the purpose. Why do we need to be broken and go back up? Yeah, to learn to learn the physics of the lower level. And then to go back across the line and learn the physics of the higher level. So here we have it. Leading scientists who recognize the limits of their field meet Kabbalah, which tells them that in order to overcome that limit, they need to alter themselves, to change, and only then can they reveal a new world. And that's not easy to hear, not easy to accept, and yet they endured. But it was very hard. I think I'm a giving person. I think I give a lot of myself in what I do. Maybe it's my ego talking. I don't know. But I, I don't. I think well, we're all egoists. I have no idea what God is, but I feel God presence. So, every once in a while, I see God. So what does that tell you? What do you mean? You know, you don't feel. There's no such thing. What do you mean? If you feel it, you can, you can, can you measure what it? What are we talking about? I understand. What are we talking about then? If you can't know God, you can't feel God, you can't see that. We are talking about research, what the Creator is, only in a scientific manner. Meaning, I feel him, I measure him, I give measurements and numbers to every sensation, I check the tool with which I feel him. That's the wisdom of Kabbalah. Of course. I have numbers here, let's say, from 0 to 100 percent, and I know exactly which lights go where, and how powerfully, under which conditions. When I take something off the table, I define it as taking it from the Creator, and what pleasure I give Him by that, and then what kind of connection it creates between us. That was our first experience of talking to leading scientists. Maybe we were unaware of certain things. The mentality is different. But Rav continued to lecture. In Kabbalah, there's no such thing as mentality. In Kabbalah, everyone is absolutely equal. Back at the lecture. How do we learn about the two levels? If we, the ones who really feel from within the 
heart, the point in the heart, the desire to go back to spirituality and feel it, we begin to learn about our situation up here. And that's the wisdom of Kabbalah. So we learn about us being here when in fact we are already in that state, but we don't feel it. But by wanting in our blocked state to awaken and feel the true state, if we learn about our true situation, we draw on ourselves. It's as if we draw the light that's present there. Because I'm in that world, in that state, I just don't, I'm not aware of it. But if I make every effort to become conscious of it, to be awakened, my desire, my impulse to do it opens up my additional vessels. And then we begin to feel spirituality. What does that mean? We begin to feel how we are all interconnected as one body. And then through each and every one, infinite light follows endlessly and without any limitations. And all the problems that we feel today in the world is only so as to force humanity to begin to go back up. Clearly, you know your stuff. There's no question. And I would learn. I, I would learn. I, I'd love to sit at your feet for a long time. I do. It would be use, very useful. It would help me tremendously. And I have no question about that. We were witnesses of a new reality being born as a second breath. Science saw in Kabbalah a unique opportunity, a chance of a breakthrough. What was it that made such a change? Was it the hours of Rav's lectures, arguments, and doubts? Perhaps it was simply that the time has come. Indeed, Kabbalah it does have a, an awful lot to say. I don't hear anything, I don't see anything, but I feel. So what you know is, is really amazing, and I, I, I honor your teaching and your wisdom. So the whole phenomenon of Kabbalah kind of emerging out of its hiddenness and in a genuine form, as opposed to just fluff, I think is uh, very fascinating and very valuable. All possible ways to awaken the people and have them become work on themselves. Uh, I think it's the way to go. Because this is something that means a great deal to me, and because I have a very positive impression of this meeting, I'm certainly happy to help in any way that I can. I certainly can contribute ideas to the film, and I'd be happy to work with you on it, sure. As long as there's life and breath and limb within me, I, I'm willing to travel. Uh. There are these three-dimensional pictures like wallpapers. If you look at them and you defocus your eye, then you go into the picture and you find a three-dimensional picture. When you look at it at the beginning, it looks like just a jagged random pattern. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, you see a Yes. Right. kind of flat mm -hmm. yeah. 3D image emerge, but I never As, uh, So these things. <laughs> so what the wisdom of Kabbalah actually does is it helps you get that picture. It doesn't do anything new, actually. It just focuses and aims your attributes and everything in you in such a way that you begin to see into matter. We are glad to have been able to share with you excerpts of the documentary Ups and Downs in San Francisco, which was produced by the B'nai Baruch Kabbalah Education and Research Institute. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Science and Spirituality. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News. May Heaven's grace be upon you.
For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ee 